In this video, we're going to be looking at the CyberPower XX650U. It claims to have eight three-prong plugs, 350 minutes of runtime, two USB charging ports, 890 joules of surge protection, which is really what I got it for, communication port, so you can actually use this to shut down your computer, and it has a built-in circuit breaker. The reason I bought this new unit is because my old unit failed during a power outage. What happened was power went out, I turned off the unit because I wanted to preserve the battery life on it so I could use it for recharging USB devices. The next day when I needed it, it had totally discharged on its own, so it was worthless to me. We got this new unit, what comes in it? You get a warranty card, some instructions, a USB communications cable, and the actual unit itself. As you see, it has eight three-prong plugs, two USB charging ports, and power supply button. We turn the unit around, we see that on the power cord side, it has a reset for the circuit breaker and the USB port for communications. Back side of the unit has one screw, remove that to replace the battery which is a lead sealed type battery. Here's my old unit, a 625 VA versus the 650 VA that this new one is. And they're fairly identical. Each of them has eight ports to plug in, two of which on each side are for uh, wide adapters. On the new machine, it isn't quite like that. It also has a battery supported and surge protection on four, and then on the remaining four, it's just surge protection only. That's identical to the old unit, which has four surge and four battery and surge protection. Looking at the side of the units, it's similar to my new unit with the circuit breaker, communication port. The old one, you could also protect your internet connection router. New one doesn't have that. Like the old one, one screw allows you to take off the back cover and replace the battery. I've replaced the battery on this unit once already and I uh, didn't want to spend the 39 or so bucks to get a new one. So what am I going to do with this old UPS that has some life to it and is still a great surge protection tool? Well, not liking to throw things away that are still useful, I've decided to take this and use it in the entertainment center. Our little media center consists of just a TV, CD players, DVD players, a stereo, a laptop, and currently they're being protected by two power strips that have surge protection on them. The old CyberPower UPS has better surge protection than these two individual strips. It makes sense that that would be a perfect tool to replace these two devices. First thing we had to do was create some space, get the two strips out, plug in the UPS, plug in all the peripherals. I then tried putting it on its side so I can get the shelf unit back up against the wall. That didn't work, so I had to actually put the UPS on one of the shelves and then get it up against the wall. But after achieving that, I was able to remove these two strips. So now our system's protected in case of surge, and there is some little battery life there that we would possibly take advantage of. Maybe I'd, I'd let it just run the router so that we'd have some internet for a little bit of time before everything went dark. But again, that's not why I'm putting that unit here. More for surge protection than for battery backup. Speaking of battery backup, when we look at the sticker on the new unit, it says we have to plug in for eight hours to charge first. But if you also look at the manual, it says your new UPS may be used immediately upon receipt. What they want you to do is charge the unit, which happens automatically once it's plugged in. So plug in the unit, plug in your peripherals, and then just leave it plugged in. We've plugged in our unit, and I've plugged a power strip that connects to my computer and computer monitor. All we have to do is turn it on. Now, if you go to cyberpower.com, you can get the software that allows you to control the unit you think tools would be the obvious place to go to, but that is wrong. It's actually a support item under software. And what you're looking for is the power panel, personal edition, unless you're a commercial user. 
And it offers you the ability to get notifications, shut down the system, restart the system. We download the software. Your browser, most browsers will allow you to see where the do uh, software downloaded to. Launch it. In my case, I have to give Windows 7 permission to run this software. I pick my language. I tell it to install. I read the agreement. I make sure that I have enough space and that it's going to a location that's okay with me. And then we install. Eventually you'll get the panel. In this case, our panel says that we are unable to establish a connection with the UPS. Why would that be? Oh, maybe it's because we need to plug in these cables. So one end of it goes to your UPS. Push it in until it clicks. Take the other USB and plug it into the back plane of your computer. And shortly, it should show that everything is normal. Under the current status tab, you get information on who's supplying the power, whether it's the UPS or your utility, output voltage, the power condition, remaining battery capacity, battery status, remaining battery runtime, and the current load on your UPS. Clicking on summary gives you a listing of the number of times you've had power outages, the number of times the voltage has been under or over, and whether an invert has been involved, whether you've used boost or buck in voltage regulation. If we switch over to energy report, we get an update as to how much power has been consumed and the relative cost and your carbon footprint. Energy setting allows you to define what country you've, you're in, the cost per kilowatt hour, and the cost of CO2 emissions. So you can have an accurate energy report. Coming over to settings, we can schedule when you want the device to come on or off automatically. Uh, the next tab is notification. It will generate an alarm or you can disable the alarm. It'll even send you an email to alert you that power has been out. So if this is, happens to be at a remote site, that might come in handy. Going into runtime, that allows you one of two configurations. Keep the computer running, you plug in a time, and the computer will run up until that remaining time on your power supply. So in our example, we have five minutes, so the computer would use, if it had an hour's worth of power, up until 55 minutes, and then it would shut down. Conversely, if you use the preserve battery power mode, if you plugged in five minutes, this will shut down the computer five minutes after the loss of power, the unit would shut down, thereby preserving the battery for future outage. So let's say the power came back on, it ran for another 10 minutes and went out, you'd still have capacity in your battery to carry you through that event. The voltage tab allows you to define when the inverter will kick in to manage your voltage. I will set mine so that at 100 volts, the UPS kicks in and prevents the voltage from dropping lower than that. And at 135 volts, it will intervene and prevent the voltage from spiking higher. Under the self-test tab, it allows you to initiate a self-test to make sure your system is working. And then in advance, it allows you to select the type of shutdown you want to specify, whether it's a full shutdown or hibernation mode. The info button gives you info on your system, you know, the model, firmware, and power rating, and some links to CyberPower. For those of you who are still watching, bonus material time. Remember at the top of the video, I showed you that it's 315 minutes of runtime? Well, it's really not true, even according to CyberPower. If we go to their website, they have a display of your model and run times. And as you see, the only way to achieve that high run time is to have a device that's only consuming five watts. My computer is consuming 150 watts, so I'm down to just a few minutes of run time. And if you're over at the extreme end at 300 watts, then you're under four minutes, and that's for a new battery. 
in a year or so when this battery's aged, you're gonna have even less runtime. So be aware that this isn't something to keep you working during a power outage. It's just to allow you to shut down your, your devices safely and to save your data. If you found this video useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and please subscribe so we can do more of these for you. And as always, thank you for watching.